Serious, Dr. Reddit. What was the saddest death you have experienced in the hospital? Attention. Serious, tag notice. Jokes, puns, and off topic comments are not permitted in any comment. Parent or child. Parent comments that aren't from the target group will be removed. Along with their child replies. Port comments that violate these rules. Posts that have few relevant answers within the first hour. And posts that are not appropriate for the serious tag will be removed. Consider doing an AMA request instead. Thanks for your cooperation and enjoy the discussion. I am a bot. And this action was performed automatically. Please contact the moderators of this subreddit if you have any questions or concerns. Three year old child had been left in care of mom's best friend. He was beaten. Burned. And sodomized. He was found in critical condition when friend and her boyfriend called 911 after he fell down the stairs. Irreversible brain damage. Couldn't imagine the pain he went through. He died a few weeks later. Luckily. Friend and boyfriend eventually went to trial and were locked up. Or me up for quite a while. We had a middle aged woman come to the ER for a bad headache. She was otherwise healthy. A brain scan showed she had stage 4 brain cancer and an estimated 10-14 days to live. Her judgment and understanding was affected by the tumor so she didn't understand what was happening. The hardest part was telling her husband that his wife, who was fine the day before, is never leaving the hospital and there's nothing he can do. A 33 yo guy with an IV drug habit relatively hidden from his family. He was sent to the IQ for endocarditis and was starting to improve from septic shock when his wife decided to bring in the kids to visit daddy. Sadly on the day of their visit, he had a cardiac arrest and we had to usher the family out while we performed CPR. Hearing the crying of a grade school kids in the background of a code is something that will always stick with me. Doctor, a few years ago I had a 50 year old guy on our intensive care unit who had had a cardiac arrest overnight from a pulmonary embolism. But had survived so far. He had had a colon cancer removed one week before and had been doing really well afterwards. Walking around the ward. Almost ready to go home. Generally healthy guy apart from this. Now after the arrest he was clinging on to life by a thread. I came to review him as part of my normal ward round and his daughter was there with him. Very upset as anyone would be. I chatted to her and examined him. Explaining what we were doing for him. She knew things were not looking good. As I was writing my notes in the corner she started just wailing dad. Come on dad. Don't leave us now. Please. Don't do this. I can't manage without you. I almost lost it completely. It was so sad. I spent a very long time washing my hands in the corner. Shortly afterwards I and my boss went to talk to his family about his prognosis. He was almost certainly going to die. It was his wife, daughters, and 75 year old mother. I could hardly look his mum in the face as we were talking to them. Old people crying has to be one of the hardest things to see. Normally they are tough as nails. Then the cardiac arrest alarm went off. I looked at them all and ran out of the room. It was him. We couldn't save him. Anesthesia resident in St. Louis. On my pediatric rotation. Went down to the ED for a gunshot wound. Arrived to the trauma bay and found a crowd of providers doing chest compressions on a girl who cold side been older than 4. She had a very active bleed coming from a bullet wound in her sternum. Intubated. IV access. Gave fluids. EP and after 20 minutes of coding they called it. The collective weight on everyone in the room was palpable. Nobody knew her more than 20 minutes but goddamn is it sad when an innocent child dies. I've seen too many to count at this point in my career. Here's one that sticks with me. A mother with a baby at full term was in a bad motor vehicle collision. We did everything in our toolbox to try to save the mother and the baby. CPR. Massive blood transfusion, C-section, and more. Never made it out of the operating room. ER nurse here. To doctor. Anyways. A 24 year old running a local half marathon or 10k. He told his friend he didn't feel great. Collapsed at the finish line. Coded and died on arrival to the ER. The physician. 
A stone cold guy. Called the kid's parents to tell them, they lived in another state, and he had tears in his eyes. Both the kid's parents were doctors. They asked if we shocked him. Gave him EP, we said we did everything. They declined an autopsy. We assumed he must have had an unknown cardiac myopathy and it finally caught up to him. I still remember his face and his story. Breaks my heart. <laughs> Emergency physician. Most deaths I see aren't immediately sad because the ones that come to me have already died or on the brink of death. There is no time to build any context or relationship with the patient or family. And therefore not easy to experience strong feelings. But one stuck out to me greatly not because of the actual death but because of what happened afterwards. A 35 year old unfortunate woman was suffering from metastatic breast cancer to the brain. The tumor was slowly swelling and causing her to start to become altered. She could tell she wasn't thinking or communicating clearly. And it frustrated her and her husband to tears. The other thing was that her cancer was already known to be terminal and her days were numbered. I sat and talked with them about her CT results. Offered to have her watched in the hospital but we all knew she'd probably be best spending her last days at home with her family. Normally I don't let altered patients go home. But in this case I thought it'd be best. I sort of forgot about her until her husband presented to me as a patient a year later. He told me that I did a great job and that they were grateful for my care but she died a few weeks after I saw her. She left behind two kids. He gave me a hug that day. And we cried together. First and only time I've ever cried on shift. There are a few that stick with me. I'm gonna try to use layman terms as much as possible. But if anyone wants me to elaborate I can. A 32 year old woman developed a necrotic bowel. Dead guts. We coded her for an hour. Because we would continue to regain the heartbeat for a few minutes at a time and the family took that as a good sign. Finally. We get a strong heartbeat. I felt like the damage had been done. Over the next few days she deteriorated. Until one morning I come in and find her pupils are blown. She was absolutely brain dead. She wound up getting pulled from life support that day. On her son's 12th day. A 47 year old lady with metastatic breast cancer. No family and she lived in absolute poverty. Healthcare costs bankrupted her. Pretty much. All she had was a house. But no electricity. Water or gas to heat the place. She came in one night saying she was really cold and hadn't eaten in a few days. We admitted her. And she died the next day. No family. No friends. The only thing she had with her was a written will leaving everything she owned, her house, to a local church. A gentleman who was a Vietnam War vet came in because he could no longer swallow. He had horrible bone cancer of the jaw. So his left lower jaw had grown to the point where he could no longer close his mouth and his teeth pushed out and into his lips. He had no insurance other than the VA insurance for veterans. And since he wanted to be comfort care they wanted to play games about getting him any kind of long term IV nutrition. Or well, he was stuck in insurance limbo. We could really only give him pain meds and watch him wither away. He also died alone. I had a small service at the local DAV where some other vet showed up to pay their respects to a fallen brother. RN. Received a patient maybe a day or two after she came in. Absolute sweetheart on the burp, large amounts of air, who cried when I braided her hair that day because nobody took the time to in the days she has been here. Came back maybe three days later. And she was on hospice care. Turns out her oxygen levels dropped super low that night and they were only doing comfort measures. I walked in. And she wasn't that conscious. Her breathing was labored. But I had a comb and our shampoo caps in my hand as I slowly combed out the previous braid I made and made one that hid the bip up mask. Family this time was in tears as I talked to her and joked about some stuff we joked about a few days prior. She ended up passing away maybe an hour after that. But I still feel so honored to be with her during those last precious hours of her life L. One of my longer frequent flyer patients died a few days ago. I'm happy they finally agreed to hospice care. But at the same time I'm definitely going to miss him. <coughs> Nurse here. I had a patient who knew they had very little time to live. And was working on a letter to their estranged child. When I went in the room to help with after death care I found the letter. 
where they had only written half the first sentence before they passed. They died alone. Nurse in the medical IQ here. I once took care of a 30 YO breast cancer survivor. The woman had had a son 6 months prior and the cancer came back aggressively. Tests and imaging confirmed the cancer had spread to her lungs, liver, kidneys, and spine. She was treated from the neck down for acute liver failure, tepsis, respiratory failure, and acute kidney disease. She was jaundiced from head to toe, packed and vented. Required a suprapubic catheter that drained bloody urine. Daily dressing changes for her stage 4 tunneling pressure ulcers. A skin weep serous fluid. Required continuous dialysis. IV narcotics to mitigate pain. And had around the clock heavy antibiotics and antifungals to treat her ongoing infections. Nearing the end of her life she required three different presser medications and continuous PRBCs and platelet infusions to maintain her blood levels and blood pressure. After all of these invasive and harsh medical interventions she was not getting any better. However, she was still mentally stable. Was able to answer yes no questions. And her husband would hold up his phone so she could FaceTime her son nightly. Due to her unrelenting disease the medical team encouraged the husband to make her comfort care and withdraw interventions to let her pass comfortably. The husband refused to retract her full code status and still hoped she would get better. The night I had her she required 7 units of blood. 3 platelet infusions. And she was bleeding from every orifice from progressive dick. We had 2 crash carts outside her room ready and a slew of somber nurses ready to code her. Her case was so bleak the doctors enacted a two physician code status change to make her comfort care against the husband's wishes to withdraw care. I left at 7.30 that morning and she died at 10.00 am. I wouldn't be able to pick one. Hardest confirmations are ones with big families. In the palliative ward a grandmother passed away surrounded by her husband. Sister. About 6 adult children and their spouses many grandchildren. She was about 65 pounds when she passed and had terminal apnea. It's sometimes called a death rattle. Her a dying patient is gasping for air. They had to pull her daughter out of the room because she was so distraught. There was nowhere else to fit the entire family so we ended up in the courtyard. It was raining that day but none of them cared. The children didn't understand and kept playing. So I ended up taking them to the other end to show them the flowers while the palliative care team talked to the family. The most memorable one was a child with a recurring hematological cancer. He had a great sense of humor and wanted to grow up to be an artist. Charities visit the children's ward and they all knew to give her paint brushes, sketch pads, etc. because she didn't want toys. Nurses put her, many, drawings up at the nurse's station. Her parents were really struggling with all the appointments. Financial burden. Etc. So to my surprise. Mother fell pregnant. They were hoping for an umbilical stem cell transplantation. Cord blood is a significant source of stem cells. Which could be used for their daughter's treatment. A daughter suddenly died of an infection weeks before the mom was due to give birth. I don't know if it counts. Those were the incidents which led to a patient's death from pneumonia in intensive care a month later. Poor fellow, 70M, was informed that it would be best to move to a retirement home because of his disabilities, was at the clinic after multiple surgeries for herniated discs, and that he'd probably not be able to care for himself in his apartment. We later found that at first he'd tried to cut his wrists with a razor, not a blade. The cage once. But he wrote his suicide note. Which of course did not work because these things won't cut deep enough. Leaving his room in a bloody mess. I was called several hours later at midnight. Because he had been found silently moaning in pain beneath a third floor window with severe hypothermia. The patients and nurses who found him initially thought that he had been drinking and that he'd stumbled on the way back inside and then fallen into the garden bed. But after bringing him inside and a look at the severe injuries of his legs, won't go into detail. The worst injuries I have seen in my career, it became clear that he had jumped out of that window legs first. His intention worked out with a gruesome delay. Such a sad and unnecessary death. Just because he felt that it would mean the complete loss of his autonomy to move into a retirement home. It. Interesting. 
how this got the starting point for a discussion on assisted suicide. This patient could have probably been saved if the information would have been presented to him with a more careful wording and by leaving him more than one option on how to carry on with his life, a nursing service would have been possible as well in my opinion. It was not my patient. First one was a 17 year old patient with cystic fibrosis. Got a lung infection, which are common in these patients. It progressed to a bloodstream infection and bacteria was resistant to antibiotics. It's a wonderful family. Close. Loving parents and siblings. With a relatively rapid decompensation. Ending up on multiple infusions of continuous medications to maintain his blood pressure. Finally starting having profuse bleeding, process known as DIC related to the bloodstream infection. He then went into decompensated shock and shortly thereafter arrested. Bleeding from nose and mouth profusely. Parents had been prepped. Being in there doing CPR when dad realized it was over. There was something about it that was just really bad. He told us to stop. Then hugged his kid and kept saying I'm so sorry. I love you. His mother let out a scream that I can still hear. This was about 12 years ago when I was a resident. I'll never forget that scream. I'm an academics and a subspecialist. I sadly see kids die often. This was the worst that I witnessed. A child dying is horrible. But I find that the older ones you connect with and that have a strong bond with the family are really hard. One of my bosses would tell us that if it ever got easy then you need to quit. I was charge nurse, RN, at a nursing home. Most needed long term care. We had a handful of hospice patients, there to die with dignity. One of our long term patients had to be rushed to the hospital. After a few days she came back to us on hospice care. It was my responsibility to go over all options of the advanced directive and outline what the patient wanted to happen. He wrote it all down. But it didn't become law until their primary caregiver, doctor, signed off. I sat with this woman for more than two hours discussing options. Finally. She decided against all extraordinary efforts. No CPR. Basically no resuscitations. She was ready to pass and decided to do so as peacefully and with the most dignity that she could. Her husband was there with her for the decision process. I filled out the paperwork for her doctor to sign the next morning. Not more than two hours after this conversation the patient codes. Although I knew her desire for no extreme measures. Because her doctor had yet to sign off I was forced to do everything I could. In front of her husband. Who trusted me to follow his wife's wishes. I had to perform CPR. I broke this old. Frail. 90 pound woman's ribs as I attempted to bring her back to life with no avail. I went against her and her family's wishes because the law required me to have a doctor's signature. I didn't bring her back. And oh felt ashamed even though I followed the law. I'm a nurse. And I've seen so many sad deaths that it's hard to pick just one. But one that stands out. We had a patient who had cancer and had to be tracked. She spent over a month in our IQ on the ventilator. Her very sweet husband stayed in her room basically 24 stroke 7. He slept in the recliner and lived on DR. Pepper and Doritos. Got to know him very well. After about 3 weeks. The nurses finally convinced him to go home and get a real night's sleep in a real bed. The next morning. He didn't come back. His son called later in the day to tell us that he had been found dead at their house. We were all completely shocked and very sad. He was one of the nicest. Most helpful family members of any patient I've ever cared for. Losing her husband was obviously hard on his wife. And her health declined steadily and quickly after that. She just gave up. She was dead within a couple of weeks. There was a pharmacy student going on rounds early one morning. We had just rounded on a mid-30s female with acetes that was an IQ. We were at the other end of the hall when a code was called. It was for the acetes patient. She apparently had a huge pulmonary embolism that resulted in her death. They worked on her for 20 minutes but to no avail. The hardest part was to see her son come and visit her. Only to have the nurses tell him she passed 5 minutes ago. I can still remember the son. Kneeling by her bed. Crying hysterically. Medical student here. The saddest one for me was in the ER. 
young woman came in with a very bad asthma attack. I wasn't involved in her care but we all heard her pleading. Please don't let me die between gusts of breath. ED provider. 4 year old riding on lawnmower with grandpa. Fell off GPA's lap was run over by lawnmower. Flown to our ED trauma code. Lots of heroic measures. Kid makes it. Fast forward 6 months kid's grandma was bringing him to the hospital for a skin graft, cosmetic work to fix wounds, and they get in a car crashing killing them both. Graduated medical school a month ago and starting residency next week. Saddest experiences I've had in medical school didn't happen in hospitals since most patients I would see there would be very old and their deaths were expected since they had many comorbidities. If there were younger patients with a terminal disease, such as late stage cancer, they would often be sent home on hospice after exhausting treatment options. The saddest parts for me were in primary care doctor's offices whenever patients were told bad news such as a terminal diagnosis, poor prognosis, or discussing end of life decisions. These doctors often had the same patients for many years so it would often be a much more personal moment than the same scenario playing out in a hospital. As a hospice nurse, the one that stuck with me was a 17 year old girl. She had some bowel issue no one could diagnose. Her digestive system just failed. She had so many scars from all of the surgeries she had endured. She was so charming and beautiful and funny. She was a painter. I am a painter as well. So I brought her my desktop easel to paint her final piece for her aunt. She was deeply into the macabre. So I bring an artist and knowing the creative type. I set up to have some friends come see her in their entire costumes. My friend was a makeup artist for The Walking Dead. The group came in these elaborate costumes. Giant headgear. The whole nine yards. She was thrilled to see them. I loved her. She even dressed up one time to show me her gown she wanted to be buried in. She was beautiful. She died on my day off. Everyone in the unit was so generous with me because they knew I had gotten attached to her. I had to leave hospice after that. My heart couldn't take it. I work in the or now for a large hospital in my area. That was almost two years ago. She still crosses my mind and my heart aches that such a beautiful charming young woman lost her life before it had even really begun. DNP here. I work in a palliative consult service. Not all of my patients are terminal or necessarily close to death. Suffice to say I have encountered a wide variety of deaths in my career. Particularly difficult were kids or parents when I worked as an organ transplant coordinator. Oddly this is none of those the case that I'm going to present bothers me because of its unnecessary bureaucratic cruelty. I received a consult for a 58 year old prisoner with a life sentence for murder. He was diagnosed with a leukemia and offered treatment. He was otherwise healthy and stood a decent chance of some response to treatment. He refused all treatment. To paraphrase. Or what? I fought and killed a man when I was 18 and dumb enough that I believed I needed to look tough. All chemotherapy will get me is more time back in the box. I have nothing to offer so why take this treatment? Give it to somebody else. I was not there to judge him for his past crimes. I saw him as honest. Stoic. Polite and human in that moment. Over the course of the week he declined everything other than food and labs. He deteriorated impressively fast. In the past 30 plus years the only family member who stayed in touch was his cousin. She was 45 feet away in the IQ waiting room. He was shackled to a bed bracketed by two large prison guards. His dying request was to see his cousin face to face. The warden refused any visitors other than first degree relations. I tried to communicate a request to the warden but was declined. Not a first degree relative. Just the one that mattered. He died shackled to a bed with the only relation in the world who cared on the other side of the locked IQ door. He knew she came but they never laid eyes on each other. That hurt us all. Just cold. <laughs> Grandmother. Older sister, 11 YO. And the patient, a 7 year old girl. Were brutally attacked by an uncle high on drugs, looking for money. Grandma wouldn't give him any. Uncle decided to hack them to pieces. Girl's mother and father died in a car accident a few years back. The grandfather worked as a sailor, he was nearing retirement. 
and had modest savings for both girls college education and then some, and sent money home to his wife and grandchildren. Grandmother and older sister didn't survive. Patient, the seven yo girl, was in the IQ. A kind neighbor took care of their affairs because granddad was in the middle of the ocean and had to request an airlift to get home ASAP. Patient dies while granddad was still in transit. The grandfather's only living relative left. The uncle. Mothers losing their child. It's always expected from our end, we're not a trauma hospital. So there's usually a few days. If not weeks. Of warning and conversations and consult to palliative med. A careful charting and deteriorating labs. But in the two saddest cases I've seen. The family adamantly refused all end of life conversations. It was a shock to them. And still when the end came. The mother crying and screaming her child's name sent electric shocks down everyone's spine. I can still remember everything about those moments. Remember one CNA from a different room running to one of the mothers and just absolutely tackling her into a firm bear hug, because the mother didn't know what to do except cry and try to hurt herself and other people. None of the rest of us knew what to do. She was so distraught. She collapsed into the CNA. Really wasn't paid enough for her instincts. I can still remember the mother screaming her daughter's name. Lady was at a golf event with her family and decided to drive the cart. Wasn't doing anything crazy but drove the cart off the path and it went tumbling down a steep hill. She broke her neck and became a quad. While in the hospital. And on the ventilator she went for a tracheotomy. But it got messed up and long story short she died. Her family and kids. I don't know why but that one always stuck with me. Just a random day at the golf course and next thing ya you know your life changes. <laughs> Pediatrician. Do not read if you don't like hearing about kids dying so I have to I will never forget. 1. 5 year old with congenital lupus who had never received care due to family's religious beliefs. Went down, likely heart stopped, in neighbor's backyard sub brought in by ambulance, neighbor didn't realize parents religious convictions. I was working my IQ month. He was in full blown kidney failure. Only option we had. Aside from continuous dialysis. Was transplant. Parents refused. Said God would heal the child. Refused to let us do anything. Kid coded and family refused intervention. So we had to watch the kid die so we were unable to get a court order to intervene prior to the kid coding. 2. I was working hospital and we had a recurring patient. A teenager. Who had progressively worsening symptoms. Started with the eyes so blurry vision. Then difficulty swallowing so achalasia. Respiratory issues. Bowel obstruction that lead to complete death of the colon. And so on. Could not figure out why this was happening. Despite extensive testing. Patient finally came in one day. About a year after initial presentation. After being found face down in the family pool her heart had stopped, no water in the lungs. Withdrew care after 48 hours and confirmed brain death. Oopsie came back 3 plus years later with abnormally high arsenic levels. Kid had been poisoned. The death was awful but finding out we somehow missed the poisoning despite testing for it was heartbreaking for all of us. 